Hello, my dear students. Myself, Dr. Rakhi Mishra, working as an associate professor in Noida uh, Institute of Engineering and Technology Pharmacy Institute. Okay. So, in this lecture, I will give you a brief idea of about tetracycline. The part one here I have written because I will discuss this tetracycline in two uh, different lectures. So, this is a first part of tetracycline which is there in your syllabus in of medicinal chemistry, right. So, uh, in this lecture I will discuss about what are tetracycline that is a very important part ki you should know ki what is what are tetracyclines then this is an antibiotic so it is clear ki it is acting against bacteria i have told you in my first lectures ki whatever antibiotics are there whatever the examples are there but the antibiotic world means ki something is active against bacteria that is not active against virus right if you say ki is it active against covid 19 covid virus no because it is a virus it is active against only bacteria so in this lecture i will discuss about tetracycline so if we talk about tetracyclines what are those if we uh, discuss about their discovery so you can see here that it was discovered in 1940 means uh, along with the discovery of penicillin streptomycin these tetracyclines were also discovered they are a class of antibiotic which are chemical substances produced by a microorganisms that are able to kill other microorganisms in my first lecture i have told you this thing ki what are antibiotics Antibiotics are those which are produced by a microorganisms, but they are able to kill or stop the growth of other microorganisms. Almost all the antibiotics which are obtained from if we talk about their natural sources, then the natural sources of almost all the antibiotics are microorganisms that microorganism can be a bacteria can be a fungi can be an actinomycetes but they are only active for bacteria okay but they used to kill uh, this is not so okay it is obtained if it is obtained from streptomyces gracias it will also kill the streptomyces gracias no from where it is obtained it will kill the other microorganisms okay they are derived from soil actinomycetes by the fermentation of basically just wait a minute ok they are derived from soil actinomycetes the name is streptomyces colicolor silicolor they are broad spectrum antibiotic that act by inhibiting protein synthesis what is the meaning of broad spectrum i think you should all know and i have discussed also ki bacti uh, means antibiotics can also be classified on the basis of their spectrum what is the meaning of spectrum ki to which extent they are killing what means either they are killing gram positive either they are killing gram negative or they are killing both depending on these three circumstances we can classify the antibiotics into three types uh, sorry two types the first one is narrow spectrum antibiotic the second type is broad spectrum antibiotic so what is this this is a broad spectrum antibiotic why this is broad spectrum because they are acting as bacteriostatic and they are active against both gram positive and gram negative if some antibiotic is active against only for gram positive or for only gram negative then it comes in the category of narrow spectrum but tetracycline what is it it is a broad spectrum antibiotic they are introduced 50 years ago i have told you 1940 century they are used to easily enter the microbes because of their high lipid solubility now very important thing ki we are uh, uh, means uh, discussing about what are tetracycline we have seen ki tetracyclines are antibiotics suppose i talk about monobactam i have told you in my lecture so one thing should also come in your mind as soon as you hear the name of monobactam ki it contains only one beta lactam ring that is not directly attached with other beta if i talk about amino glycoside so if you have attended my lecture if you have read from any other sources that what 
what are amino glycosides then by the name itself it should come in your mind that it is having a one amino group it is having a glycosidic linkage and it is also having a sugar moiety similarly if we heard the name of tetracycline please don't see this right just focus on this name tetracycline again i am telling you ki it is made up of two words the two words are tetra plus cycline what is the meaning of tetra four cycline means ring that means it should be clear to you that tetracyclines are those compound which contains four ring in spite of all the substitution they should have four ring in their structure and these tetracycline as you are seeing that in the general structure of tetracycline also there are four cyclic ring so the same thing i have written here chemically and structurally they are a class of antibiotic which are having a nucleus of four cyclic ring and what is the type of that four cyclic ring they are having a skeleton a basic skeleton of octahydronaphthacene skeleton um now the next question which should come in your mind is what is the meaning of octahydronaphthacene skeleton i will tell you see this thing should be clear that it is make up of yeah it is made up of four cyclic ring suppose i draw this what is it it is benzene okay if i draw this what is this what is the basic skeleton means it is something skeleton of naphthol if i draw this what is the meaning of this anthra scene okay so the three things are benzene naphthol and anthracene and when all are, all these things are combined together then what happens it took place a formation of what take place naphthol plus anthracene forms naphthacene and because it is not having uh, you can say it is having an octahedro group means eight hydrogen why there is a presence of eight hydrogen because two hydrogen makes a one double bond so here four double bonds are missing conjugation is not there right and because of the lack of that conjugation means in this one benzene ring is present naphthol is present anthracene is present and when naphthol and anthracene are combined together it will form a name of naphtha scene so you can see forget this benzene in naphthol and anthracene the four double bonds are missing and because of the missing of that four double bonds the prefix octahedro is attached and by combination of all these three things the name becomes octahedro naphtha scene so that's why here it is written that it is having a four cyclic rings and because of the presence of hydro uh, sorry naphthacene skeleton it comes in the category or it is having a common octahedro naphthacene skeleton okay so this is the basic structure now again uh, moving towards the detail of this structure here four rings are present starting from right hand side ring a ring b ring c ring d now at the first position you are seeing here is a ketonic group again and cnh2 group oh group nch3 whole twice group dimethyl amino group then nothing is here okay but here alternate double bond o ketone hydroxyl ketone hydroxyl group is present so how we have numbered this ring i will tell you why in the above things you are not seeing anything 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 and you can rename it as 4a suppose this is 12a 
this is 5a, this is 11a, this is 6a, this is 10a. So, by this you can do numbering, but a very special feature is you, what you should keep in your mind is ki tetracycline is having a 4 cyclic ring in their structure and along with that 4 cyclic ring what you are seeing that all these substitution are also there in the general. See we are not discussing any example of tetracycline, we are discussing the general structure of tetracycline and in this general structure what you are seeing that dimethyl amino group is present, CONH2 group is present, alternate O, OH, O, OH is present and also a hydroxyl group is present. I will tell you in the SAR study ki what is the major importance of the presence of these groups. Okay? So, now moving towards the classification. We have seen ki what is tetracycline? Tetracycline is a antibiotic which is having a 4 cyclic ring structure and the 4 cyclic ring structure is based on octahydronaphthacene skeleton. Now, if we want to classify then there are 2 bases for the classification of their tetracycline. The first basis is based on duration of their action. You all know you have learned in the you have seen in the your pharmacology classes that based on the duration the drug or any molecule can be uh, divided into short acting, intermediate acting, long acting means the duration. The duration of drugs in this class is very short, the duration of drug in this class is intermediate and the long acting. Short acting uh, are having their half life of 6 to 8 hours, intermediate acting are having their half life of 12 hours and long acting are ha having their half life of 16 hours. Just wait a minute. Okay. So, short acting half life is for 6 to 8 hours. Examples are tetracycline, chlor tetracycline, oxy tetracycline. Actually, tetracycline, chlor tetracycline, all these two or uh, domicycline, right? These are the tetracycline which are first obtained naturally. Okay. Then comes the intermediate acting with a half life of 12 hours because it is obvious that if we want to develop something more uh, means action then the duration must be high. Right? Long acting half life of 16 hours, doxycycline, minocycline and tigacycline. These are examples, this is the first basis for classification of these antibiotic. Okay? The second basis. On the basis of their preparation method, I have told you na, ki naturally obtained tetracyclines are tetracycline, chlor tetracycline, oxy tetracycline, dimethyl tetracycline. In the form of semi-synthetic tetracycline, doxycycline, minocycline, methacycline, this classification is very important. In GPAT also you can get a question. Ki, what are the natural tetracyclines? Tetracycline, chlor, oxy, dimethyl, semi-synthetic, doxycycline, minocycline, methacycline and in the pro, what is the meaning of pro? Ki which act as an pro drug and these pro drugs are designed for increasing the bioavailability, for increasing their lipid solubility. So, the examples under this pro tetracyclines are roly tetracycline, clomocycline. Okay? Just wait. Okay. So, this is the classification means two classification of this tetracycline class is there. The first class is based on the duration of action, the second class is based on their preparation methods. You can see here the structure. See tetracycline is a natural tetracycline. I have told you na ki alternate hydroxy alcohol uh, sorry ketonic alcohol ketonic alcohol group presence of CONH2 group OH group dimethyl amino group. Up see here what is uh, what I want to tell you only change in the structure basically is in this place. See CONH2 here it is here double bond O double bond O. Uh, see it is drawn up in opposite direction but the thing is same OH OH O O OH OH but the difference here is NCH3 is also here NCH3 is also here, but here what you are seeing 
that chlorine group is also present that is why it becomes chlor tetracycline and you can see here that it is having a methyl group and it is having an hydroxy group, but here it is having only the hydroxy group. Similarly, compare the structure of tetracycline with oxy tetracycline, see here OH is present, just wait a minute. I, what I want to tell you is after this I will tell you, this O is present, here O is present, this OH is present, OH is present, CONH2 is present, CONH2 is present. NCH3 hole twice, NCH3 hole twice, right? OH, OH, O, O, OH, OH, all these things are present. The only difference here is presence of this OH group. That is why it is known as oxy tetracycline. Now, actually, I want to tell you very important thing that I will discuss later when you understand that what I am trying to uh, show you. Again, Again, comparing the structure of these two things, tetracycline with doxy, by you have seen this, this doxy tetracycline comes in semi-synthetic and tetracycline is comes in natural. So, it is obvious that whatever we are obtaining as natural, we are making some changes in this, in their structure of that natural product, then only we can call it as semi-synthetic. So, this tetracycline is natural and for example, this doxy is semi synthetic. Okay? Now, compare the structure, O is present, O is present, OH is present, OH is present, CONH2, CONH2, NCH3 hole twice, NCH3 hole twice, OH, OH, O, O, OH, OH. The difference here is again, again I want to highlight something, here no OH, suppose this is uh, A, B, C, D. Here it is A ring, B ring, C ring, D ring. See here, in the B ring there is no hydroxy group, but in the semi-synthetic we have attached a hydroxy group. In the C ring, methyl with hydroxy group is present, but here only methyl group is present. This is the difference in structure. So, you have seen ki whatever the source is, natural or semi-synthetic, there is a change in structure. Now, come to the point. The only change in the structure is in this side, in the side where NCH3 group is there. Here NCH3 group is here, here NCH3 group is here. So, only in the plane where NCH3 group is there, the changes are taking place. But this O, OH, O, OH, CONH2, NCH3 whole twice, all these are similar either we talk about the structure of natural, either we talk about the structure of semi synthetic. Is it ok? I hope you understand my point, because in detail we will go towards the structure activity relationship, but what I want to tell you is ki either you talk about the natural tetracycline or you talk about the semi synthetic tetracycline, the structure requirement of all the tetracyclines are similar. What is their structural requirement? Presence of four ring which we named as A, B, C, D. Then the presence of OH and O double bond O alternate position. Then the presence of CONH2, then the presence of NCH3 whole twice. Okay? Now, this is Rolli tetracycline. I have told you na, see here. This Rolli tetracycline comes in the class of pro tetracycline. Pro tetracycline means pro drug. So, this Rolli tetracycline is a pro drug in which you can see very clearly that OH is present, O is present. By right? this is the general structure. OH is present, double bond O, OH is present, all things are present. C double bond O is also present, but here. NHCH3, in spite of NHCH3, one you can say heteroatom is attached to it. That is a Rolli tetracycline structure because we are making it as an pro drug, and because of the presence of this heteroatom, the lipophilicity of Rolli tetracycline is more. Okay, mechanism. One important, very important aspect which I want to discuss with you tetracycline that this tetracycline 
Okay. Okay. This tetracycline, in for this tetracycline, I want to uh, discuss you one thing that this tetracycline is having a very special features. If you uh, remember or if you uh, means give a uh, thing, ki whenever any doctor prescribe a tetracycline, always doctor ask you, always a pharmacist ask a patient not to take milk along with tetracycline. Please remember this point because this is very important point in terms of your GPED examination also. Always a doctor, a pharmacist tell the patient that do not take tetracycline with milk or do not mi take milk after just after you take this tetracycline, any type of tetracycline. Why? Because this tetracycline makes a chelate with some metal ions or it forms a chelate with calcium Ca2 plus magnesium iron. So, all these things are avoided. Why? Because tetracycline doctor is prescribing you to kill the microbes to give some action, but if you are taking tetracycline along with the milk then what is uh, what is the thing which milk contains in a very large quantity calcium right. Everyone a layman can tell you he milk contains calcium right. Hana? So, when calcium is present in the milk and simultaneously you are taking the tetracycline then what will happen? This tetracycline will make a chelate. What is the meaning of chelate? Like this right, like this it forms a complex with calcium and so its structure is disturbed and because of the disturbance in the structure what will happen? It will not be able to give its action. So, again I am telling you this is a very important aspect from your MCQ type questions of any exam ki why tetracycline is avoided uh, or why milk is avoided while taking tetracycline because it forms a chelate complex. Okay? So, now moving towards the mechanism till now whatever we have discussed, whatever we have learned that almost all the antibiotics if antibiotics falls in beta lactam ring, beta lactam antibiotics or tetracycline also they inhibit the protein synthesis. Again protein synthesis of what? Tetracycline is very selective, selective in what sense? It only stops the protein synthesis of bacterial cell, okay? it stops the synthesis of bacterial cell. It inhibits the protein synthesis how by binding to 30th ribosome A unit. Because of this attachment of amino acyl tRNA to messenger mRNA is interfered as a result peptide chain fails to grow. I will tell you how. Tetracycline have a selective toxicity for the microbes as protein synthesizing apparatus of host cell is less sensitive to tetracycline. I have told you na, ki it is very selective for the bacterial cell, it will not give its action to the host cell and the carrier involved in active transport of tetracycline is inhibited in host cell. See this is the mechanism, I will tell you how. In the earlier lecture I have also told you ki this is 30th ribosomal subunit, mRNA template or mRNA is present, above it is 50 years because we are here discussing about the prokaryotes. It is made up of 50 years and 30 years subunit. In the 50 years subunit, three sites are there. First site is A site, then P site, then E site. Okay. tRNA, what? Amino acyl tRNA. Amino acyl tRNA will bring amino acid to A site, then it is transferred to P site, and when P site causes the reading of codons then it will again be transferred. Okay? So, in this way the peptide chain is elongated. What, what is happening? See here ki this is having the 30 s and when this amino acid is transferred from A to P nascent polypeptide chain is make. 
what happens amino acid trn is coming and binding to the 30s subunit 30s subunit a site and what is happening at the site what is the name of that site transferase site what tetracycline is doing it is going and attaching itself to the a site of this 30s ribosomal subunit and when it goes and bind to 30s ribosomal subunit then what will happen this peptide chain this polypeptide chain is not able to form why because there is no transfer means the transfer of T amino acid trn is not able to bind here so the transfer of amino acid from a site to p site is inhibited and because of this inhibition peptide chain cannot grow and when peptide chain is not able to grow that means proteins are not synthesized and when proteins are not synthesized then bacteria will die this is the consequence i hope you understand that it is binding with the a very simple concept is first point it is binding with the 30s ribosomal subunit of bacterial cell then it is causing the it is stopping the attachment of amino acid trna which is bringing a new amino acid see here amino acid trna is bringing a new amino acid to the acceptor site but what happened ki tetracycline is here so tetracycline is not able to means tetracycline is not allowing this a site to take this amino acid from amino acyl trna and is this amino acyl trna is then not transferred to p site so as a lack of the transfer of amino acyl trna what will happen peptide chain will not grow and because of the lack of that peptide chain proteins are not synthesized so this is the mechanism it also binds to some extent to 50s ribosomal subunit also right but the main is ki in gram negative bacteria it diffuses through porin channels okay what i tell you is about the tetracycline is mechanism its classification that is all thank you very much Hello, my dear students. Uh, today, myself is Dr. Aki Mishra, working as an associate professor in the Pharmacy Institute of NIET, and today I will deliver lecture on the topic amino glycosides. Right? This is also a part of Unit One of your medicinal chemistry subject. And till now, we have discussed about the beta lactam antibiotics, and the second very important type of antibiotic is amino glycosides, which we are going to discuss now. in this uh, you can say whole lecture we will discuss about what are what is the meaning of this amino glycosides what are the different classes of amino glycosides what are their examples what are their structure what is their mechanism of action sar of amino glycosides and individually some main drugs belonging to this class okay so we are starting now amino glycosides we are going to discuss in this class about amino glycosides my first and foremost question which comes is what are amino glycosides you all know that this amino glycoside name is made up of two words one is amino second one is glycosides this uh, you can say division of this class amino glycosides it is made up of two words the first word is amino and the second word is glycosides amino is nh2 group now the question is what are glycosides glycosides are those sugar molecules which are attached with the glycosidic linkage means if any sugar molecule is attached with any glycosidic linkage and then this glycosidic also linked with any functional group which contains a any type of group 
functional group which contains the NH2 then they are known as amino glycosides. I have written in my first line that amino plus glycoside. Amino is NH2 means any type of functional group, any type of uh, you can say ring structure which contains an amino group plus any type of things which can form a bond. What bond? Glycosidic bond or linkage plus sugar. So, in the molecule of amino glycoside, sugar molecules means glycon as well as A glycons, which contains any type of amino groups, they are linked together, joined together with the glycosidic linkage. And when such compounds show any anti, uh, you can say antibacterial action, then they come in the category of amino glycosides. Very important examples of this class amino glycosides are streptomycin, kenamycin, tobramycin, neomycin, gentamicin, sisomycin, nantilimicin, amikacin. These are very important as well as very common names which you have heard many a times. Ki streptomycin, neomycin, right? Gentamicin, sisomycin. Okay. So all these are examples of these amino glycosides. So before starting or before going into detail of this topic, one thing should be very clear in your mind that what are amino glycosides? Amino glycosides are a type of antibiotic. The first point is ki they belongs to a class of antibiotic. Amino glycosides are what? Amino glycosides are amino glycosides are the class of antibiotic. Okay. This amino glycosides are a class of antibiotic which contain three things. What are those three things? Sugar molecule, non-sugar molecule with an NH2 group. In uh, sugar molecule also NH2 group can be present. Okay? So, all those, all these two things, sugar, sugar molecule can be 1, 2, 3, 4, anything, right? And non-sugar molecule can also be 1, 2, 3, 4, which are having the NH2 group. And all these are linked together with the glycosidic bond. Are you getting my point? Ki they are linked together with the glycosidic bond. So, when they are linked together with the glycosidic bond, they comes in the category of amino glycoside. Okay. Now, moving to another slide. General properties means if uh, whether we talk about gentamicin, whether we talk about streptomycin, some properties, some exceptions can be there. But in spite of those uh, exceptions, the general properties of all the amino glycosides are they are highly water soluble, so they are not absorbed orally, right? They are more active at alkaline pH. Their excretion is in the form of unchanged molecule by urine. They are bactericidal in nature. This is very important point. We will discuss it later. They also inhibit protein synthesis. You can uh, means you can point out one thing ki till now we have discussed about beta lactam antibiotics of different classes, but almost all the classes are the protein synthesis inhibitors and they are active against again for gram negative bacteria in the initial lecture we have discussed about the amino uh, sorry we have discussed about the monobactams and we have seen that monobactams are active for gram negative and again this amino glycosides is also active against gram negative bacteria and if we talk about the different examples coming in this uh, category, they all resemble each other in their pharmacokinetics, therapeutic and toxic properties. I have told you some exceptions can be there, but almost all are having the same pharmacokinetic property, therapeutic and toxic properties. Okay? Now, amino glycosides classification. This is again an important aspect ki how you can classify these amino glycosides. See, uh, basically in uh, the books and uh, in many textbooks you can find that these amino glycosides can be divided into one type on one basis. The basis is key administration, mode of administration. 
but one thing is very important that they can also be classified on other bases. What is that and other bases means the first bases which I, I have written in this slide is on the basis of mode of administration right on the basis of mode of administration and the second basis which we can also discuss is on the basis of sources I will tell you the things first ok when we divide this amino class uh, amino glycosides classify this on the basis of mode of administration two things are there in front of you the first class is systemic amino glycosides the second class is topical amino glycoside one question which should uh, come in your mind is why there is no parenteral amino glycosides yes this is a drawback of this amino glycosides that they cannot be administered parenterally because of their unchanged excretion by the urine ok. So, that is why they are not effective parenterally only oral amino glycosides in the form of topical agents can be administered and the different examples of syst uh, sorry uh, parenteral I told you parenteral is systemic amino glycosides and the second one is topical amino glycosides. Systemic amino glycosides means parenteral and they are not given orally in fact in spite of that oral administration they are given they are administered topically ok. So, parenteral or systemic amino glycosides examples are streptomycin, gentamicin, canamycin, tobramycin. The second category on this is topical amino glycosides examples are neomycin, framcetin, amicacin, sisomycin, natalimicin ok. This is the first classification ki on the basis of their mode of administration. The first one is systemic, the second one is topical, not oral uh, administration is here. Mm, just wait a minute. Okay. Now, the second to, uh, this is your first basis of classification. The second basis of classification I have not written in this slide, but I am telling you because that is not a very important type of classification. It is also not given in almost all the textbooks, but you should know at least. Ki, the second basis for their classification is on the basis of sources. Now, what is the meaning of sources? The thing, the place from which, uh, from where you are getting this antibiotics, ok. You are getting these amino glycosides. On the basis of sources, they can be divided into two types again. The first and the first or you can say the main type of source is streptomyces species the first source is streptomyces species and the second source is micro mono spora micro mono spora species right means on the basis of sources they can be obtained from two main sources among which the very much important as well as the main sources streptomyces species right and the second sources micro monospora species. Now, how can you classify by uh, here in the screen you are seeing just wait a minute mm, ok these are the two sources I have told you. I am rubbing here because I want to tell you one thing more. Mm, sorry. Streptomyces species and Micromonospora species. Now, if I talk about Streptomyces species, all the amino glycosides which are obtained from these Streptomyces are named by adding the suffix as myces ok suffix as sorry mycin not myces my sin mm, one minute
okay they are named by adding the suffix my sin and those amino glycosides which are obtained from micromono species for example micromonospora purpurea you have heard this name micromonospora purpurea and if they are obtained from this species a suffix is added the suffix is what m i c i n so two suffix are there the first one is mycin the second one is mycin now you can classify from here also ki you can see here streptomycin you can see uh, when you see the name of streptomycin you can tell anyone ki it is obtained from streptomyces species when you see the name of kenamycin you can tell that it is obtained from streptomycin when you see the name of tobramycin you can tell that it is obtained from streptomyces species why because they all are having the suffix of my sin they are all having the suffix of my sin okay now if you see the name of gentamicin so you can tell very confidently that the, it is obtained from the species of micromonospora why because in spite of having mycin it is having a suffix of mycin similarly amikacin sisomycin this is an exception in fact natalimycin okay so what i want to tell you ki if we uh, just wait a minute okay if we uh, discuss about the classification of amino glycosides then you can tell that they can be classified on the basis on two bases the first basis is mode of administration among which the systemic amino glycosides and topical amino glycosides are there and uh, the different examples of systemic and topical are such that ki streptomycin gentamicin cana and tobramycin are systemic and neoframycetin amikacin sisomycin are topical okay now the second basis is based on their sources they can be obtained from streptomyces species and also they can be obtained from micromonospora species if they are obtained from my, uh, streptomyces species a suffix mycin is added to their name and if they are obtained from micromonospora species a suffix mycin is added so this is all about the classification of amino glycosides now these are the structure these are the examples uh, which i have uh, shown here is kenamycin ne neomycin right all these are kenamycin is systemic and neo is topical so i have given two example structure of two examples kenamycin and neomycin here you can what i told you ki the presence of three things are there one is glycon glycon means sugar molecule other is a glycon and the third one is glycosidic linkage okay three things should be present in their structure now if you see the structure of this so it is having the three things the first thing is glycon the second one is a glycon and the third one is glycosidic linkage you can see here that they are joined together by the glycosidic linkage they are also having an amino groups you can see here and what are these molecules these molecules the a and c the a and c here is inositol molecule in inositol it is having the all the oh groups okay just wait c what is inositol molecule inositol is a six member ring structure having all having oh at all the places places so this is your sugar molecule this is also your sugar molecule and this is non sugar or a glycon molecule and all the three are attached with glycosidic linkage and this molecule is inositol molecule okay similarly in this structure also neomycin you can see here that there are three sugar molecules 1 2 3 and it is attached with non sugar molecules and all the things all the structures are linked together with the glycosidic linkage here so this is the uh, structure of the compounds which come in this category 
now chemistry of amino glycosides what i have told you i have written here that glycosides are those plant product in which sugar moiety is joined to a non sugar moiety with a ether linkage glycosidic linkage is what o so what is this o ether linkage if the sugar molecule is glucose the glycosidic uh, the glycoside is called glucoside right and if it is an amino sugar means if along with the sugar an amino group is also attached then it comes in the category of amino glycosides okay i hope you understand this thing ki suppose a sugar molecule is present and if that sugar is glucose then what is the name glucoside ya yeah, glycoside right and if an amino sugar is present then what is known as amino glycoside okay so this is the chemistry of glycosides mechanism this is very important part mechanism of action for amino glycoside before the discussion of this mechanism you should understand that what is the main motive and what is the normal procedure for attaining that motive see the main motive is it inhibits the what it do it inhibits the protein synthesis right you have seen in my initial slide ki it inhibits the protein synthesis protein synthesis of what protein synthesis of gram negative bacterias right not of host only it is it is interfering it is inhibiting the protein synthesis of bacteria cell so if protein is not synthesized within the bacteria they cannot survive for a long period and ultimately they will die now the factor is how they act they are stopping this protein synthesis but what is their main mechanism of action see what happens ki if we consider a normal uh, protein synthesis process then the process of protein synthesis is translation i hope you all are understanding the two process are transcription and translation right but when we talk about the protein synthesis process then it is translation that means it is inhibiting the translation process of these bacteria okay first point second how this how they are inhibiting this translation process i will tell you the mechanism but before that the first thing is they should enter the bacterial cell wall bhai if they are inhibiting the protein synthesis of bacteria then there should be a mechanism by which they can enter that bacteria suppose this is a bacterial cell wall right here the protein synthesis in the cytoplasm in the nucleus is taking place so what is the mechanism by which this will enter into the bacterial cell wall the transport of amino glycosides through bacterial cell wall and cytoplasmic membrane takes place and then they bind to ribosomes which is present in the uh, you can say um, they bind to ribosomes which is present inside the bacterial cell wall and what they do they causes the inhibition of protein synthesis and the transport is multi step process means first they enter the cell wall then what they do they bind with ribosomes and when they bind with like this with ribosomes they will cause the inhibition of protein synthesis now the thing is how they are binding how they are stopping that protein synthesis they diffuse across the outer coat, uh, coat of gram negative bacteria through the porin channels in my first lecture i have shown you the difference between the outlay uh, outlay of gram positive and gram negative bacterial cell wall i have told you that along with the uh, polysaccharide layer there is a outer layer of lipoproteins and in these lipoproteins some porin channels are present so they diffuse across the porin channels okay and it is an oxygen dependent active process it is not a passive process it is an active process and when they go inside the bacterial cell then they binds to 30h ribosome and they stop the protein synthesis so the two things you should remember first they should enter the bacterial cell wall and with the help of what oxygen they are 
uh, means entering the bacterial cell wall and also with the help of porin channels and when they go inside the bacterial cell wall they are inhibiting the protein synthesis how by binding to 30s ribosome now again very important point i will tell you here Suppose if we consider the ribosomes of prokaryotes and it is 70s, that 70s is made up of 50s ribosomal subunit and the second one is suppose this is 30s ribosomal subunit and in the 30s ribosomal subunit mRNA unit is also present, okay? mRNA unit is also present. In the 30s ribosomal subunit there are three sites, one site, second site, third site, right. The first site is acceptor, then P site and then E site, A, P, E, three sites are present. And in the A site and along with uh, ribosomes, one protein, one subunit is also present, that subunit is E25. Okay, what it will do? They go to 30s ribosomal subunit and they bind with it. And where they bind? They bind here. Suppose they bind at E25 subunit, which is present in the acceptor site of ribosome. Then what will happen? Because this mRNA is having a codon sequence, right? So the tRNA have to come and give some anti uh, means uh, anti codons to this for completion of the protein synthesis but what will happen here amino glycoside is present so trna comes and can't bind to this acceptor site and because of the unbinding of trna complex to this acceptor site some type of misreading of genetic code occurs means the anti codon which trna is bringing it is not there so this mrna will read something different. For example, suppose G U C codon is present, the anti codon of it is for example, I am just giving you an example. Suppose the G U C have an anti codon of A U C, but here trn is not able to come and bind because already amino glycoside is present at a site. So, what will happen? In spite of A U C, it will read some type of A C G then what will happen? Misreading occurs and because of this misreading, protein can take place, protein synthesis can take place, but incorrect proteins are synthesized and because of the incorrection, because of the uh, you can say disruption of the protein synthesis, the uh, cell or the bacterial cell can die. So, this is here ki amino glycoside bind to 30s ribosomal unit, they prevent the formation of initial complex. What is the initial complex? S25 binds with acceptor site of 30s. This is the initial complex for the prerequisite for peptide synthesis and then lack of formation of initial complex causes 30s subunit to misread the genetic code and this is the basic problem which the mRNA faces and because of which protein synthesis stops. Incorrect amino acids are thus incorporated and ultimately it will lead to bacterial death. The same thing which I told you is here, okay. This is effect uh, A site, P site and E site. SAR of amino glycosides is very simple. Ki ring 2 can accept few structural modification, for example, acetylation, it can be ribose and less structural changes is allowed in ring 3. Streptomycin is the first amino glycosides which is obtained from Streptomyces gryces. I have told you ki it is uh, means discovered by Wexman who received a Nobel Prize and this is the structure of streptomycin, the different properties of streptomycin is written here and I have told already you ki it exerts a synergistic action with penicillin, I have told you ki it is a water soluble and you can see here that it is having a structure of inositol, I have told you na ki it is inositol is also there, methyl pentose and N-methyl L-glucosamine is also there. SAR of streptomycin is very simple, key reduction of aldehyde. You can see here that it is an aldehyde. If we reduce it to alcohol compound, then 
it will have the same activity, but some effect severe effects adverse effect of deafness. And if we do aldehyde oxidation, then it will having it will have no activity, right. This is neomycin, the structure is here, it is a topical uh, formulation. Then kenamycin, this is the structure of kenamycin, in it also the two you can say sugar molecules are joined together with a glycone moiety with the help of glycosidic linkage and this is all about the amino glycosides. Thank you very much.